I was kids, about 16, and uh, when they, the Marine Corps opened up for what they call colored people, I decided I wanted to be a Marine. Mouth of Point was a camp set, set aside and established for African Americans when they first opened the door to go into the Marine Corps. It was at Camp Lejeune. At that time, everything was segregated. Growing up in Milwaukee, I didn't know about uh, separate water fountains, riding in the back of the bus. Uh, I, I just didn't know that this was going on. They were trying to tell me the, that I couldn't sit on a certain place on the bus. And then they started thinking, about now you're going to fight for this country to do where you can have segregation and uh, which I, I think was wrong. Some of the guys talked about the discrimination back home and uh, my thought was that by us be fighting for the country when we got back home that things would be better. Then when we got back to Michigan I went to a restaurant. It was like a drugstore on Woodward and Willis. It's not there now. And uh, I went in to buy something. And the clerk in the store was a lady. She told me, she said, your money don't spend here. She would not serve me simply because I was a black man. And uh, she just, that was a disrespect for me and the country because I was in uniform, but she didn't care. You were just as good as anybody else. Don't care what's the color of your skin. Treat people like you want to be treated, and then you'll be treated right. But don't run over nobody and don't let nobody run over you. Be a man, and that's what I tried to be, a man. Will I be proud of uh, Congress uh, recognizing the black Marines, uh, Mount Point Marines? I sure will be, because uh, uh, it, it, it's a, a uh, source of pride for all of us uh, to uh, know that finally uh, people are beginning to know about us and about some of the things that we did during uh, World War II and some of the other wars. Well, we did a lot of leading and, and directing and fighting over there to help the United States become a, a better country. And also to treat the black man a, 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 di a different way, more respectable and so forth. He was a man and he was supposed to be treated as a man. And I think the Marines helped that a whole lot. I'm uh, just going to be able to sit down and uh, talk to my grandchildren about it. These things are going to be taught uh, to them. Uh, when they read the history books, they will say, my grandfather was there. This is a source of pride for me. I feel that I've had a successful life, and part of that, I think, is the Marine Corps, because of the Marine Corps. And I salute. A picture to me means a reminder of the past. Things that you would like to remember about yesterday and beyond. You want some of these? Last summer, casual day to have lunch, a gentleman approached me and said, I see you wearing a Buffalo Soldier shirt. And that is girl smile. So he said, well, I happen to have inherited some stuff from my grandfather who passed several years ago. And there's some photos of some black soldiers. And I was wondering if there's something you'd be interested in. And I said, sure, yes, I would. 
came home and I looked at them, they were really interesting photos. Like 95 pictures of all of these guys, their induction, their training, and their transition to the war in the South Pacific. There it was, the Mumford Point Marines, who were the first black Marines into the service. You talk around the water, just around you the water. about that more famous water tank. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Oh, I went there. around this thing I don't know how many times <laughs> because I could never remember my hat. <laughs> see, this guy, I don't know. See, see this guy's a lieutenant. Well, I like to see their faces looking over these pictures and ooh and on and reflecting back on with that. It is quite a treat, yes, yes. It's good to have these memories brought back. I didn't drink. I sold all mine and sent the money home. You didn't have that much. You got two cans of beer. How often you got those two cans uh, of we beer? We got four. We got four cans of beer about every six or seven weeks. Oh, yeah. We got two. I, I don't know. I think I gave mine away or something. I don't know. No, Pabst Blue Ribbon. I, I don't know what yeah. it was. Pabst Blue Ribbon. I remember that Milwaukee beer. Yeah. I didn't what drink. kind of beer did you get? Well, we we handled the beer. <laughs> 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 These are pictures that uh, I never thought existed. And I felt that it was necessary for this story to be told rather than something just to be sold. And I want this story to get out. You see this guy is holding his head up. The segregation was terrible, but these guys endured it, persevered, and came out, you know, war heroes. They were determined to be the best that they could be and that their country could be proud of them. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Ashmore. <laughs> Ashmore. <Ashmark. laughs> this looks familiar. This guy is the epitome of the drill sergeant. We called him Hashmark Johnson. His toughness against them wasn't personal. I thought it was me. It was business. But I'll tell you what, he was the most feared person on that base. If somebody told you that Hashmark wanted to see you, you were in trouble. That is the greatest thing to say, I've endured all the training, all the tests, and now I have the honor of saying I am a Marine, that their country could be proud of them, and no one could ever take this away from them. But nobody was ever able to, what was, to, to know what was going on with the black Marines. Uh, and and, and, and uh, I was concerned about that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see these things happen for us, because uh, this will open a lot of eyes. You know, uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, will stop us from being forgotten. And ignored. Ignored, right, right. This is a mess hall. I don't know where this is, but we didn't have salt and pepper shakers. To hear these guys talk about um, now that they can look back on it in the little, the frail voices, trembling voices, and they can say, you know, I can look back at this and be proud. And when I saw this 86-year-old man just salute that he was proud to be a Marine, it wasn't as crisp as it would have been had he in his younger years, but it was still there. The mindset, the determination, the values and all that was still in these guys from what they endured in going through the Marine Corps.